I mean, for the last couple of days here, we've been seeing all these different companies who are filing their, I, th I think it's called 13F reports in the US and something similar here in Canada. So we're seeing all these different countries who are getting exposure to Bitcoin right now. They're not telling anybody about it. We're just finding out about it through these filings. And so two big ones yesterday that happened in Canada here. Let me bring them up. The first one. Breaking. The Bank of Montreal has Bitcoin ETF exposure per their 13F SEC. Oh, so it is 13F for Canada, I guess, too. SEC filings today. So that must be public companies in the U.S. have to file this 13F. I don't know. I'm not a trading expert. I'm not a finance expert. Don't claim to be. Uh, but Bank of Montreal has Bitcoin ETF exposure. Crazy. And just in, the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce has 7.2 million of Bitcoin ETF exposure. The second Canadian bank today. This is a, these are big deals. Like we see these headlines, we kind of expect this to happen eventually. But it's happening today. This has happened right now. Two banks, Bank of Montreal, CIBC, two of the biggest banks in Canada are holding Bitcoin, have exposure to Bitcoin. And keep in mind here that Bitcoin at the very front page of the Bitcoin white paper, it says peer to peer electronic cash. Peer to peer means that there's no banks in between the peer and the other peer. The whole point of the Bitcoin white paper and the whole point of Bitcoin is to separate money from state. And that's one thing we've been talking about too, actually, is that, I mean, we, we think about separating money from state and what that looks like, but that's essentially just us separating the money from a very small group of people who control the money, the Federal Reserve, the central banks. And that's much different than these banks. These banks are provide a service to people. They hold money, they lend money, they pay out savings based on how much money you're holding with them. And they don't have any ability to decide how much money is pre, uh, printed and how much new debt is added to the balance sheet. So it, that's an important thing to keep in mind here. But at the same time, good on them, for one. They've both the Bank of Montreal and CIBC have both. I've heard over the last year that they've been stopping transactions. Uh, if you're trying to send money into like a shake pay or a bull Bitcoin, they've been stopping these. So that's pretty hypocritical, I think. But at the same time, they're realizing the fact that something is wrong here in the economic situation. Something's very wrong. And so what they're doing is they're essentially hedging against the dollar that they facilitate all day. So they both have exposure to Bitcoin. And I think that they'll be the first of a ton of banks across the world that start holding Bitcoin. Um, and Jordan says, seems like a higher floor has been set with these new market participants. Yes, that's a that's a big thing happening right now. Um, and something that we didn't have four years ago with last time we went through the halving cycle is these ETFs. It's created such a strong floor here and foundation for Bitcoin. And that's why you notice things like the 200-day the moving average of Bitcoin hit an all-time high last week, 50,000 bucks. And it's hitting an all-time high because the floor is so strong it, it doesn't go down like it used to there's just so many people who are trying to buy bitcoin right now and that's another thing that i've been thinking about too with these etfs is that i think that the reason you know people have all these different theories about them keeping the price of bitcoin down and trying to keep it down and why they would want to do that and i'm, I'm kind of on the camp that thinks that blackrock actually wants the price of bitcoin to be high and the reason for that is because they make their management fees off of their fund, the value of their fund. So if their fund has 200,000 Bitcoin in it and it's worth $10 billion, that's what they're making their fees off of. If their two, 200,000 Bitcoin all, all of a sudden becomes $100 billion, that's what they're making their fees off of. So the higher Bitcoin goes eventually, the higher their funds are going to be worth or the more their funds are going to be worth and the higher their management fees are. So I don't think that they're gonna to try to keep Bitcoin down forever. 
But at the same time, this is what I think is happening right now. I think that all of these ETF providers, all of these banks, everybody knows that once Bitcoin gets to a certain price, it's going to have a shitload of eyes on it. And when it has a shitload of eyes on it, people are going to start buying Bitcoin. And because Bitcoin is a scarce asset with a fixed supply, there's only so much Bitcoin available. And that, um, that amount of Bitcoin available keeps going down and down and down. People are taking their Bitcoin off the exchanges. The ETFs are buying it up and never selling it. That The available supply of Bitcoin is going to continue to go down. So they're trying to keep the price low so that the average person isn't looking at Bitcoin. Because it's it's been kind of flat for the last couple months. And when things are flat, nobody's paying attention to it, right? So the longer they can keep it down, the less eyes they can keep off it and the more of it that they can accumulate. That's essentially what's going on right now. We're at a war, we're in a war of accumulation of Bitcoin between the average person like us, the little guy, and the the big banks, the institutions. Everybody's gonna have Bitcoin eventually. It's just how much.